guys, welcome back to my channel. I am uh, coming at you from my kitchen and um, living quarantine life, you know. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you all and your families are staying healthy. I know this is affecting a lot of people and um, it's, a, it's scary, you know, it, it, it's scary. And I respect those of you who are staying in quarantine and respecting these rules that have been put in place for now because working as a nurse on a COVID unit you really see how it's affecting these patients and it's really scary and it's very sad so anyway that's not what this video is about I am here to talk to you guys about my trying to conceive situation a couple updates for you and our adoption journey I know um, I briefly mentioned it I think in my previous video that we are going to adopt um, but I haven't really talked to you guys about it. So that's what today's video is gonna be. Just a couple updates, talk to you guys about adoption, and uh, yeah, let's jump on into the video. So um, let's start with like my trying to conceive updates for you. I have a couple, and um, so the first thing I know in one of my very first fertility videos, I mentioned that my vitamin D level was pretty low. I think it came back at like 17, and they want it to be above 40. So they put me on prescribed vitamin D pills <clears throat> and I got it redrawn not too long ago and it came up to 45, which is perfect. That's right where they want it. So now I'm just taking like daily vitamin D just to um, maintain that number. And um, let's see what else. Jake is taking his uh, fertility supplements just to kind of help boost his numbers. And um, so I got that SHG ultrasound, which showed um, endometrial polyps in my left uterus which um, they don't really want there that can actually affect implantation before we did anything about that they my doctor ordered actually for me to have an MRI done of my pelvis so they did one with and without contrast that pretty much showed that I have what's called a bicornuate uterus I think that's how you say it which is pretty much I have two uter uteruses uteri that lead to one cervix. So I was always under the impression that I actually have two cervixes, So, but I, um, I have one. So that was clarified. And um, so when they did the SHG ultrasound, they only saw my left uterus. So he explained to me that it could have been how far they inserted the, the catheter through my cervix and where the balloon ends. So wherever they did that, it only filled up the left uterus. So he said, depending on maybe like pulling down on the catheter and then injecting more, it might've went into my right uterus too. But, um, so they only were able to visualize my left uterus during that ultrasound, which is fine. That's where they identified that my polyps are, um, and they're not really sure about the right, if there's polyps in that one or not. And so, um, and then we actually just had a follow up with him again, not too long ago. And he is strongly recommending that I get the polyps removed in order to move forward with trying to conceive. Um, he just, he sent me like an article about how having those endometrial polyps in my uterus can affect the implantation. And uh, yeah, so they would need to be surgically removed, which <laughs> not too happy about, but um, I am gonna do it. I'm just gonna get them removed, just get them out because you know, for like right now we're just trying naturally like we don't want to start any IUI or IVF because we are in the adoption of uh, the process of adoption so we don't want to be spending money on IUI and adoption so um, we're just gonna I'm gonna get them removed and just continue to try naturally until we adopt and then once that's over. hello oh this lady um, and once that's done then we might try IUI uh, so, in order to do this surgery, though, they need to place me on birth control, which ugh, I'm not too happy about because I don't like being on birth control. But um, they just—they said they just want to ensure that I do not get pregnant before the surgery, and um, they want my uterine lining to be very thin. So they want to start me on that. And uh, this last week. Um, I'm gonna try not to get emotional about this because it's really frustrating and upsetting to me, but um, this last week, my period was late. And normally my period is very regular 
and it might differ like a couple of days. It might like be 27 to 29 days average. And um, so it hit 30 days and I was like, okay, I'll give it another day. 32 days came around, 33 days came around and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, like, is it finally happening? Like, am I finally pregnant? Because my period, like I said, it's always regular. It's never late like that. So I took a test and it was negative. So of course I was like, that's weird. Like that, like why would, like what other reason would my period be late? So um, another day went by, I took another one, negative. So at this point, like as soon as I missed my period, my hopes like skyrocketed. Like I was so hopeful that it was finally time that I would be pregnant. And um, I, the nurse actually called me to kind of follow up with my previous appointment with doc my doctor. And I mentioned to her that I hadn't started my period yet. And she was like, okay, um, if you don't start it by day 35, call us and you can come in, we'll do a workup. So they'll draw the HCG, um, they would draw estrogen, my progesterone, and um, they would do an ultrasound, all just to make sure that I'm not pregnant and then they would actually induce a period. <clears throat> but I started cramping really bad last night, like I was gonna start and I am bleeding this morning. So uh, I don't know why it was a week late this month. I really don't, I really don't know why, like what could have caused that. But um, during this whole process, I've learned I, to not really get my hopes up anymore. I don't test for pregnancy every month like I used to. I just, I, I threw away all my tests because I was driving myself crazy testing, you know, a week before my period. And, you know, I was just, going crazy about it so I don't test unless my period is late so when it came late this month I got so excited and those are just the cruel realities of trying to conceive when you get your hopes up and it's not the case so I'm not gonna cry um so yeah obviously I'm not pregnant still so um And like what's even worse is like I had such a real dream and I have these all the time and it's pure torture that um, I test positive and you know I surprised Jake and it this time it felt so real because it was our anniversary Sunday and I in my dream I had taken a test that morning on our anniversary and it came back positive and I set up this cute thing for our anniversary and like it felt so real and I can't tell you how many times I have dreams like that where it's positive and then like in the back of my head like maybe I am pregnant like that maybe that's my body telling me like it happened this month I'm pregnant but it's never the case so it's just pure torture every month just seeing my dreams and them not actually coming true so I'm not gonna cry <laughs> um, anyways let's talk about something else uh, let's move on to um, adoption talk <laughs> So me and Jake have talked about this actually a couple different times before we even started to try and have our own baby um, and that was adoption and it was always kind of in the back of our minds like we both would like to do it we both wanted to do it and now that we have been trying we kind of realized that we're ready to be parents and why not try and adopt and I don't want you guys thinking in any way that we're adopting because I haven't gotten pregnant I think like it just became clear like we're ready to be parents whether that's through adoption whether that's getting pregnant on my own like we're just ready to be parents and so we finally are pursuing adoption and we are going to adopt through the foster care system which pretty much just entails um, like the program we're going to is foster to adopt so normally the kids that are coming in are legally freed from their biological parents they don't have any rights to them anymore which obviously is devastating for the families however um that's kind of where we come in and where we can adopt these kids that need love and need homes so um we already did our information night we kind of talked to the program coordinator about like kind of the age range, whatever. So um, we're open to either boy or girl, um, any race, but we do want them to be four years old or younger. 
that's just kind of like where we're at right now in our life. Um, we don't really want an older kid, maybe later down the road, like if we want to adopt again, we might adopt an older child. But for now, we do want them to be at least younger. Um, so this week we start a six week training course, which is just every Thursday from six to nine. And it's just like an online course. Um, normally it's in person, but because of all this COVID crap going on, um, they're gonna do it just like a Zoom meeting. And so that's every week for six weeks um, on Thursdays. And then after that, we can pursue a home study, uh, which is just this huge document that caseworkers can look at that just kind of talks about us as a family, like, you know, kind of like how we live. They do, they go around and assess the home and they look for certain things, which um, there should be a checklist on like our online portal. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, just kind of like taking this one step at a time because it is a lot and it is a long process and it can be overwhelming. But um, we're just starting with the program, like the training course. And then after that, we can do the home study. But before we do the home study, we have this online portal where we have to upload a whole bunch of documents. We have to get background checks, fingerprints. The dogs need to be up to date on their vaccines, which they were not. So I just got Coda done today. I'll probably get Lila done um, in maybe like two weeks. Um, we both have to go to the doctor and have them sign a piece of paper pretty much saying um, whether we have mental illness or not, if we have any chronic illnesses, just anything that could affect our ability to parent. And um, just a couple of different things that we need to get done that could take a while. So um, we just need to have all of that done before we start the home study process. So we at least have some a couple weeks to get that done, which at that point we would just pretty much wait um, to be placed with the child, which she said is average like seven to nine months which like we're not in a huge rush to have a child right now. So um, we are willing to wait that long. And then um, we go through pretty much a transition period where we go meet the child, um, spend some time with them in their current foster home just so that they can get used to us and not be so terrified when they come into our home to stay with us, which I really appreciate because I know these kids have already been through a lot. They don't need any more trauma in their life. So yeah. But that pretty much is what's going on. We are so excited. My family's so excited for us and I'm so eager to meet our future child. And um, it's just crazy to think like they could be out there. Like if we got placed with like a three-year-old, they're alive somewhere. Like, where are they? Who are they? I just want to meet them and love them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our update for now. Um, I will keep you guys updated throughout this process and kind of let you guys know how things are going, where things are, any updates that I have. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's what's going on. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you all for those of you who are supporting us through this. And if you are going through something similar or are starting the adoption process, please reach out to me. I am getting to know a lot of different people who are going through this same journey and um, it's really exciting to just talk to people who kind of know how you feel you know so anyway thank you guys so much for watching please stay safe stay healthy wash your hands and I will see you guys in my next video